Hello, you are watching Shalom World News. I'm David Kerr from Lansing in Michigan, and these are your latest news headlines from around the world. The Vatican has confirmed that Pope Francis will not travel to Scotland for the United Nations Climate Conference, which begins later this month. The 84-year-old pontiff, who recently underwent colon surgery, had previously said he hoped to attend the COP26 summit in the city of Glasgow, but added it would depend on how he felt at the time. On Friday, the Vatican said its delegation would be led instead by the Holy See's Secretary of State, Cardinal Pietro Parolin. The Bishops' Conference of Scotland say they will continue to keep Pope Francis in their prayers. US President Joe Biden has rescinded a rule preventing tax dollars set aside for the federal government's family planning program, known as Title X, from going to organisations performing or promoting abortion. The Protect Life rule was introduced by President Donald Trump in 2019. It states that Title X projects may not share office space or financing with abortion facilities and are not required to refer for abortion. President Biden's new diktat comes into effect on November the 8th. The chairman of the US Conference of Catholic Bishops Committee on Pro-Life Activities, Archbishop Joseph Neumann of Kansas City, has decried President Biden's decision, stating that abortion is not family planning. Meanwhile, the bishops of the United States will gather for their first in-person meeting in two years when they convene for next month's fall General Assembly of the US Conference of Catholic Bishops. The event will take place in Baltimore from the 15th to the 18th of November. High on the agenda will be the election of five committee chair positions, as well as a new treasurer elect. Each post is being contested by two bishops. The winner of each election will serve as chairman elect or treasurer elect for one year. Following that year, the chairman elect or treasurer elect will become the chairman of the respective committee and treasurer of the USCCB respectively. Each term lasts for three years. The people of Poland have been entrusted to the paternal care of St. Joseph. The ceremony of consecration took place on Thursday at the National Shrine of St. Joseph in Kalitz in southern Poland. It was undertaken by the chairman of the country's bishops conference, Archbishop Stanislaw Gadecki. The papal nuncio to Poland, the primate of Poland, and numerous Polish bishops were also in attendance. In a letter addressed to those gathered in Kalitz, Pope Francis imparted his apostolic blessing. Drawing upon the story of Joseph from the book of Genesis, the Pope exhorted Poles to go to Joseph and do whatever he tells you. Meanwhile, Poland's constitutional court has ruled that the nation's laws take precedence over European Union law. The landmark decision came in response to a question submitted by Prime Minister Mateusz Morawiecki. He queried whether the European Union's Court of Justice was going beyond its competence in ruling on Poland's judicial system. The reply from Poland's constitutional court was yes. They said that the actions of the EU's Court of Justice violate the rule of law, the primacy of the Polish constitution, as well as the retention of national sovereignty. It is the job of the European Union's Court of Justice to ensure that member states and EU institutions abide by EU law. Poland has been a member of the European Union since 2004. Pope Francis says the urgent task of all religions is to eradicate hatred from the human heart and to condemn all forms of violence. The Holy Father was speaking at the concluding event of the 35th International Meeting for Peace, which was held at the Colosseum in Rome on Thursday, October the 7th. The two-day inter-religious gathering was hosted by the Rome-based St. Egidio community. The summit was attended by religious leaders from 40 countries. Before observing a moment of silence for the victims of war, Pope Francis prayed that all people would demilitarize their hearts. Held under the theme of Peoples as Brothers, Future Earth, the Rome event was attended by representatives of Islam, Judaism, Hinduism, Buddhism and Sikhism, as well as Christianity. The US Commission on International Religious Freedom is demanding that the Taliban respect the rights of religious minorities following the Islamist takeover of Afghanistan in August. Speaking on Wednesday, the chair of the commission, Nadi Mienza, says that the US State Department should prioritise visas for members of religious groups who are facing extreme risk of persecution in Afghanistan. The Commission on International Religious Freedom is an independent, bipartisan federal government body who monitor religious liberty around the globe. Mrs Mienza also urged the authorities to prioritise resettling survivors of Taliban persecution, including women, homosexuals and atheists. Finally, Pope Francis has hinted that he may soon declare a new doctor of the church. 
The possible nominee is St. Irenaeus, the second century Bishop of Lyon in France, who defended the Catholic faith against the heresy of Gnosticism. The Holy Father indicated his intention while meeting members of a joint Orthodox Catholic working group on St. Irenaeus on October the 7th. The working group strives to promote dialogue between Catholics and Orthodox Christians. Pope Francis hailed St. Irenaeus as a theological bridge between the Eastern and Western Church. A doctor of the Church is a title given by the Church to saints recognised as having made a significant contribution to theology or doctrine through their research, study or writing. Presently, there are 36 doctors of the Church. Well, that's your latest headlines for now. Do join us for more tomorrow. You can also visit us at swnews.org for news updates. Shalom.